Just woke up, kids are still sleeping. I gotta do it whilst they're still asleep. Anyone with kids will know that if they wanna do any extracurricular activities, they gotta wake up or sleep late to do anything extra. Anyways, let me properly get set up with the microphone. There's a strange bird noise. Okay, I think I'm all set up. Hopefully you can hear me better with this. So today I wanna go over native VR feature of SketchUp. This is fairly new thing because it was included in the 2019 launch. I saw sort of the preview of it at AIA New York event. I saw the version of it in 3D Basecamp, but I actually never really tried it myself either other than HoloLens viewer. So I'm actually quite keen to see how immersive it is and what sort of visual performance that SketchUp gives you natively. This is bridge between rendering and just regular 3D modeling of SketchUp. I just wanted to record my first hands-on experience with it. If it works, if it doesn't work, I don't know how it is like. So let's give that a try. So if you actually go SketchUp pricing, if you are a professional, the XR headset viewing, augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality application for use headset and devices. So XR, I guess it means mixed reality AR and VR. So that is not available for shop version. Pro version has it, studio has it. This will only be available if you have pro version or the studio version. Because I have studio version, I wanted to access that. And it seems that there's not immediate way to access this. It's not included in the download page. So I kind of have to look through this. If you go SketchUp, download all, and there's a viewer. And SketchUp always had a viewer, so I'm actually not so sure if this is it. Maybe SketchUp team can clarify that a bit. I was reluctant to download this one because it just seemed like a regular viewer. So instead of download all, I had to go my app. And I didn't see an easy way to get this page. I got it through my licensing and I had to go a bit to find this page out. It wasn't really shown there. I expected that page to be somewhere perhaps here because I'm licensed. As long as you are logged in, I believe that it will land you on this page. And here are all the downloads that are available for your case. At the very bottom, I see XR headset apps. Right now I have this one right here and I have shown this before, but it is a Windows Mixed Reality headset and they often call it WMR. That's why you see WMR, so I'm actually interested in this one. I don't have Oculus or Vive on my hands right now, but if you own those, I suppose you can try that route as well. So Windows Mixed Reality, and it lends me to Microsoft.com webpage. And I don't know why that trailer is showing as black. I don't really care. So it's free and get I guess I can just click that and open Microsoft Store and it'll bring up Microsoft Store for me. And that's black again. I don't know why. Maybe it's just downloading the source. Yep. All right. And I own this app and it is downloading. So whilst it is downloading, I better get the headset set up. Otherwise, I can't use it, right? Forgive me, I'm gonna have to get down there to connect these. Okay, now I'm back with this headset set up. So as soon as I connect them, the mixed reality portal really should pop up. Maybe I should have these controllers set up as well. So if I just hold down these two buttons right here, it'll just come on. So let's go ahead and launch to see what happens. Did anything happen? I can close this, I guess, and this one as well. So the right and left are both connected. However, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. So hit this play button so you guys can see what is going on. There's a message. In order to view your own content, please sign in with the account associated with... Okay, sign in. So the idea is that I can basically sit down and then just navigate with Min Windows Mixed Reality headset. So I'm just gonna sign in with Google, it's just easier. Okay, I guess it's not there either. Can I use keyboard? Maybe. It'll be easier if I can. Okay, I sure can. All right, nice. 
See, I can do this whilst my eyes close. All right, SketchUp viewer. All right, get started by opening model from Trimble Connect 3D Warehouse. So this works the same way it always works with my models. So I better have my model included. So let me pick this up. All right, got it. Browse and download models to warehouse or access model via Trimble connected account. Maybe I need to sit back a little bit like this. It's kind of weird. All right, I can go up and down. I saw it. Ooh, you're getting close. Uh, maybe let me go ahead and go. I got it. All right, no more options available. Got it. Browse your computer for models. Got it. I can probably do that one. Okay, so as I click this trigger finger, it's not loading it, it's just flicking it. Uh, this is not what I wanted to load, but sure, why not? Click to anchor on model. I want anchor to the floor, so I'm just using a trigger finger and click. And now I am inside of that model. That's great. How do I jump? Then I guess I could up. Oh, I guess I'm going cycling through the views. And then what can I do with this? Nothing on the left hand. Collaboration setup. That'll be very interesting to try out. Application settings. Top down. How do I go back to different model? All right, let me back out and let's see if I can drop something Joseph Kim 3D objects. So I can click this button and probably look for SketchUp in here, all apps. SketchUp viewer, okay, it seems snappy, that's good. Okay, my models, I guess that is not accessible. Folder location, and mall number one, I guess that's fine, let's just wait a bit. And I guess it's loading up all of my assets, 62%. It is just literally showing the face. So I can move my right hand to see where I can anchor. Preferably, I'll just point down to the floor, perhaps. Put myself in relative to height, maybe right there. Okay, now I'm in. So how can I move? Maybe middle button. Oh, hold down my trigger finger. I just walk around and this thing stays in the way. So let me just pin this panel somewhere on my left so I can just kind of see it. All right. So I can walk around this way. Since I'm sitting down, this is slightly more difficult. Let me just back out a little bit further. So there you go. I can go around here. Let's do tape measure. So from here, to there is about three and a half meters. That's great. Let's delete that. That is a very good feature if you want to measure things around. And then I can click on things and then it tells you what layers. That's great for figuring out sort of the information. And then this one is to the transform panel includes. All right. So I guess I can modify things. Oh, I am moving the model around. All right, I can move that, the entire thing. So I am back to tabletop mode. Okay, I see. Click on the model to view it in immersive. All right, I am immersive and I am walking around. Oh, I can go sideways by using this controller on the left hand or right hand for that matter. And I guess right and the left works exactly the same. I don't have to really point at anything. I just hold down trigger finger and I just walk forward. And if I want to go sideways, I just use this controller, the knob on the controller to go sideways, front, backwards. So I guess that's a better way to control yourself. Although it could be quite disorienting for people who's not used to this. So if I just press that pad, I just go in the same orientation up and down. So I wonder if I go below this platform, 
and then hit up if I just end up above my head. So right here and then up, I'll end up on this platform. Oh, that's great. But I had to physically turn around, look down, and if I need to go downwards, I just press this button or I guess that button as well. So right hand and left hand work exactly same, it seems. I can walk. What can I do? Can I jump? Oh, okay, that's great. I can jump. Hello, uh, I believe that was Steve and I'm using him to sort of represent me in a certain position, I guess. So I click and then I move. I wish I can change to something else because in a professional environment, having a person show up like that can be quite distracting. So in order to go through glasses, you have to go stand very near it, have your hand through. I'm afraid I'm gonna hit my monitor or something. So here you go, I can just jump around like so. Can I go upwards? Up there. So I guess you hit the ceiling and I just bounce onto the floor. Send them over there and then I click over here, okay. That is intuitive. Um, as long as we can change or they can just replace Steve for someone else, not someone else, but something else, it'll be great. Quite distracting to have someone show up like that. That is quite distracting. A lot of people will be having a laugh and they won't be talking about your great design or model. The way the conversation goes is they might point at things like, oh, this sign is actually flipped, but you see Steve jumping around all over the place. So that's not really good sketch up. So perhaps you can sort that out. So maybe it just becomes a point of dot or something or a little tiny person that shows up rather than someone that you can distinguish. And that's mainly the reason why I always put white silhouettes because people can be very, very distracting. And if you have people that you can recognize, such as real looking people or a shape that you can recognize, then it'll be very, very distracting. So that's why I want to avoid having a known person inside of your view. So I'm curious to see how this function would work. I think it would be very well since you can do it natively. Do I want a safe model? No. And this is a line I always like to say, welcome back to reality. And people will have usually like a weird mark on their faces because they've been in VR for so long. So let me wrap up the video here. That was the XR viewer inside of SketchUp that I wanted to try out myself and share the experience with. So I guess that's sort of first hands-on experience and how to install sort of, not really a guide because I was just trying out myself too. So um, hopefully that was helpful for you. If you like this content, please like it and subscribe to the channel if you want to continue watching these type of videos. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.